Anthony de Haas. You are <laughs> director, director of product and I like your zone. But you have a very long story behind you. And it's related not only to Alange und Sonne. <laughs> so um, you have a, you had a dream as a boy. You started you thinking that you will be at least a rock star. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you really read the okay, yeah, okay, you're well um, informed. Yeah, that was my dream. Yeah. And then <laughs> you made the watchmaking school. Yeah. You're at Seiko. Yeah. And then afterwards. Afterwards, you switched to Switzerland, mm -hmm. IWC, mm -hmm. and then um, Renault et Papi. Renault et Papi. It has a very know. strange, very strange horological journey. How, yes. How how was it? To, no. to, a lot of change. <laughs> yeah. Not planned. Not planned. <laughs> no, no, no. I had never a career planning, and I was, I think it was ten years old. I discovered drumming. So what I did, it was drumming instead of doing my homework. So <laughs> school, school was quite a disaster. I finished school, and and and, and my parents they supported me, and so and, and but they said, yeah, okay, drumming we leave, it's all good, but you mm -hmm. need to do a profession, and so that's why uh, my parents had the genius idea. So okay, you want to be drummer, and was playing in a band, and things quite quite often. Uh, playing and doing and wanted to be the best and famous drummer in the world, whatever <laughs> that means. Um, and then my parents had these marvelous ideas and maybe we find something where you can maybe build drum kits. Because if your, your professional career as drummer doesn't work so much, maybe you do more the technicals. Now, that, there doesn't exist a school for drum kits builders, or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. So I landed at, at, at the toolmaker school. And I did that, and, and with us it's to complete day in school. So it's mm -hmm. just school day. So it's three years in school, and then the fourth year is like an internship. And in the three, third year you have the exams. And I, I was okay with that, I was okay with that, but uh, then a friend of mine went, switched to watchmaking. It was the school next. Mm -hmm. And wow, and I just went, you know, these open days there, you can take a look at so I said, wow, I was so fascinated by the size and the small mechanics. I must say that I was a, a model builder, skill mm -hmm. models at home, mm -hmm. so the smaller the better. So it was wow, and that was like wow. That's what I want to do. Impressive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but I still wanted to be the best drummer in the world. So, mm. But I did watch making school, and I finalized, and then I started working as a drummer. And at the same time, I played in bands and tried to be famous. And it's not a matter of being good or best, but you have also a bit of luck on your side. You have to be we had the some right nice, moment. Uh, yeah, right I played in very nice bands and made CDs and stuff. And still even playing. Even, Yes, yes, yes. Uh, we, we, we had a long and zone band. And at the Christmas party once a year, we, we played three times. And that's fun. We do concerts for the colleagues. So that's cool. Mm -hmm. And I have another band. It's just a couple of old farts. We make music. music and, uh, and it was. Uh, it's fun. It's just fun. A bit of rock, a bit of blues. It's mm -hmm. cool. And, and you need to do that. It's a nice balance. Yeah, and then uh, if you're in Holland. And I was working at Psycho, and yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, I was really, uh, I had watch magazines, most of them in Germany at the time, from German, mm. because the Dutch didn't have a watch magazine at the time, in the 90s. So, I was like, oh, wow, look, at, mm, okay, IWC, I liked. And uh, I had the idea, and I love Switzerland. Well, I went very often with my parents to Switzerland, it was a beautiful country. Uh, so you were impressed by the country already? Already, so it's just like... Doo -doo -doo -doo. Mm. And, and um, I said to my fresh married wife... What if? What if we just call IWC and ask if they need watchmakers? And watch IWC, yeah, yeah, no problem, yeah, okay. Mm. So we moved to Switzerland and the idea was originally just to stay for two, three years in Switzerland in IWC and then go back to Holland. Because I knew at that time there was no after sales service really for IWC in the Netherlands. So I thought, mm -hmm. okay, maybe if they know me it's and I know them, mm -hmm. I could build up a service center for them. And cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had the experience of being in, in a foreign country. And then I was at IWC and then the contact with Renault Papi came. 
because two uh, a, a school buddies support Kroneveld and I went to the same watchmaking mm -hmm. class. Mm -hmm. It must have been terrible for these teachers, but mm. <laughs> but you had a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun. Um, and we always kept in touch with Bart and, and uh, of course I saw that Bart was in England and he did World Step and he did the Renown Puppy and, mm -hmm. and, and so we had a contact and he said yeah but you should come to Renown Puppy, that's cool, so yeah but I don't know if I can. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, and then I went to Renault Puppy. And it was quite a shock troop. No, it was quite cool. It was fun because I didn't speak French, so we need to learn French and uh, we learned French. And, uh, You're not the only one, at least. Yeah, yeah. And it was at that time was a bunch of foreigners, of course. You know, it was Stephen Force here of Grobel. Mm. Uh, oh, and, and it was a, 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 a community of foreigners. So Kari Vutilain, and uh, mention all these, yeah, Peter Speak. Uh, mm -hmm. That was fun. Uh, a lot of shalali uh, shalala, what we say. A lot of fun. And. So it was a great time, and I was doing their minute repeaters to start with, and then they asked me to do the Grand Sonneries, which is quite mm, special. Mm -hmm. uh, so I did Grand Sonnerie. And the, the, yeah, what happened, when I left IWC, when I gave notice, I had to come to Mr. Bloomline at that time, and he wanted, uh, he did it with all, he wanted to know why people leave the company. He said, mm -hmm. can I ask you why did you leave? What did we do wrong, or is there something else? So I said to Mr. Blitz, I'm very proud of you, but I am going to Renault Papi. Mm. Knowing that he knew Renault Papi. Um, I was like, wow, and I can do complications. He said, yeah, but I can organize you doing complications at IWC from tomorrow if you want. And then I said, yeah, but respect for IWC, of course. Renault Papi but is still a bit of a different level. Mm -hmm. And then he showed me, and that was, a, I think, a moment that, that I got infected with the lung and zone virus, I think. Um, he was had, had a prototype of a data graph, and he took it off, he said, look at this, this is made, developed and built in Saxony, there I need you. And like, you know how the data graph movement looks? He turns, Ooh. It's a lung. Wow. It's the first time I had a lung in my hand, wow, wow, it was very impressive, of course. So, there I meet you. You come over and mm -hmm. see yeah, but sir, I signed a contract, I learned French. And he said, we can arrange that. We find an arrangement with Renault Papi and then it's okay. But in fact, I didn't want to do that because we were all prepared to go to the French speaking mm -hmm. part mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. start that adventure. So, and Brunner said, okay, I, I, I respect that. And, uh, but we kept in touch until he unfortunately died in October 2001. Mm -hmm. um, and the, 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 I don't know, probably coincidence, but the, the, the bizarre thing is, I think a week after the funeral, funeral of Mr. Bluna, I had to come to the office of uh, Giulio Papi and he said, yeah, we have a project for Lange. And we have, uh, and we have some language problems because it's so funny, it's Switzerland, but it's Renoi Papi, nobody speaks German. Yeah, Robert Grobel spoke German, but he left already. He mm -hmm. was offered in 1999. So, and can you do the project management? I said, uh, me, project management? What, What's uh, that? Uh, yeah, but I have my cup mm, of tea. Mm, and, mm, okay, and, but I can't combine it with doing a grand sonnerie and that the next time I'm doing meal, that doesn't work. Uh, and then they offered me the possibility to go to the evening school and one day a week I went to marketing sales. Uh, I did courses for three years. And now we can then became the head of commerce, so, so uh, on marketing sales, not for AP, but for my puppy. Mm -hmm. So negotiating with brands for, uh, for well, because we, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, so we, we also developed the course for other companies. And that was a cool part. So I think it was two, three weeks after the death of Mr. Bloomline, I was the first time here in Glasfutter and met the team here. Mm -hmm. And we had a project and Everything went well, and, and it's okay. So I did my job, and, and the project with Lange was, was over. And then in 2004, I think, the Lange called me, and then they asked me to be become what I still do today after... It's my 18th year now. Yes, it is. You practically uh, grow with the brand, and the brand grew yeah, with you. Yeah, and it was amazing. They still didn't kick me out, so I'm still there. <laughs> you know? What? The What's key is working every morning, so well, okay, let's do another day. Coming to work and everything will be just fine. What's your proudest achievement or the project that you have wow. the closest uh, to your heart? Oh, wow, wow. That is so difficult. 
Yeah, because, because all are your children at the end. Our children, not mine, but our children. It's a team effort. But mm -hmm. yeah, uh, it is. And, and you guys see a watch as a watch, as a product. Oh, that's a beautiful watch and that's a watch. But I see it more as, a, oh, that was the development. Oh, that was a bumpy road before we had that done. The Zeitwerk, for example, was, whoa. Mm. That was a very exciting thing because we really didn't know where it landed. The, the thing became more and more complicated. And so, oh, I was a bit afraid because it's, it's in fact, the Tidework is a watch which has a time indication, okay, in a special way, and a power reserve indication and a, and a small second hand. But the price is, of course, uh, four times more than an uh, 1815 up and down, which has the same indications. Of course, not in that complexity. Yeah. Try to explain that to people. Uh, so that was uh, not a nightmare that would be exaggerated, but uh, like the wall. Um, and, and but we said, yeah, okay, you know what, we did that and we had it really as a mono product. We didn't have any plans to make other executions like we had today. It was never, mm -hmm. not, nothing mm -hmm. happened. That came after. It was an exercise. Yeah, no, it wasn't an exercise. It was a dream. We all had the dream to make the Semper Opera clock, the five minute clock, on your wrist. But then, of course, not five minutes on your wrist, you know. No, no, every minute. the real one. Mm -hmm. And then making a watch. So, and, and we worked all very hard and it was crazy. It was a crazy project, project but we have more crazy products. I think what is even more complex, not due to the fact that it's a complicated movement, but the fact that we entered a segmentation which was ground of other frame, famous brands, was mm -hmm. the Odysseus. I think the Odysseus is the most difficult project I had at Lange. Not because of the complexity, but where because there, of I what think it we, represents. Yeah, and, and I think there we could have done many things very wrong. Try mm -hmm. to copy the famous, the famous one, eh? you know what I mean. And, 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 and I must say that we have the Odysseus, the idea to do something like that, exists from 2005. And in 2006 we made the first attempt. Like, what is it? And that was also due to by the fact that we had collectors and they say, hey, Tony, I have 15 Lange watches. But not the, the Lange watch I have for the most precious time of the year, my holidays. I can't wear a datagraph on the beach mm. or something else. Mm. Why don't you make, you guys, you should make Ruins something that, for, but it must be a Lange. Uh. The bar is high. And then we started to think, at that time we still had Langomatic in the collection. Mm -hmm. And we said, okay, what is that the answer? Putting a Langomatic movement in a robust case with thick and crown protection and, and clumsy and chunky and make it 150 meters waterproof and there you have it. Personally, we didn't like it. We, we, were, we saw that like a, like a rip-off. <laughs> because we said, okay, people bought just the platinum Langomatic and we put that movement in the same steel and then it's suddenly that's bullshit. So it's you didn't want to make like the car manufacturing cutting the roof and yeah. then they're saying yeah. Yeah. it's a it's a no. it's a coupe cabriolet. You no, want I to make it from start you the know, real one. No, so, and sometimes I think we are more watchmakers than watch sales guys over here. But you need to find the balance of course in both. But so that's what we said, okay we don't. And it was a difficult task. So it was not before 2009 we had a second attempt. It's mm. very human. We had so many projects. And what is human to do with a difficult product? You postpone a bit. You find excuses <laughs> not to do that. Procrastination. We did, we did. Yeah, we did that. We did that, to be honest, really. The second attempt was like, yeah, but is it then the same idea like the big ones did? Like, like a, 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 a form-shaped, integrated thing, like Nautilus or a Royal Oak, something like that. Uh, we didn't even make sketches, I so said, no way, because people see us as copycats and it's clearly, really commercial. Clearly, you don't uh, want to leave, leave space for interpretation. No. You, know, it, you um. always have to see, okay, when I present, present such a watch and our watch collectors from who we make the watch for, mm. that was that. Oh, I could have well keep my Royal Oak or something like that. So that's, you, and the market was not waiting for another Royal Oak or a Nautilus. Mm, clearly not. So again, postponing again, <laughs> we had other priorities. Uh, I think it was in 2012, 13, we came up with the idea. We knew, okay, we need to create a new face. Now, if something is difficult in watch industry is creating a new face, which of course 100% fits to this brand. 
clearly. Um, so we worked on the, with the two windows, maybe indirectly inspired by Sidewalk with these two windows. Mm. Maybe, I don't know. But we came with the idea and, and for us it soon was like, no, a sports watch for us, an elegant sports watch, you should not feel. No chunky, no chunky crown protectors. No, it must be an elegant, longer watch, but still some robustness. A longer that you can take to the pool or yeah. you, can, yeah. you can fall from the boat without fearing yes, that. Yes, but also you can wear with your suit. Mm -hmm. And that's what we did, in fact. And, and then we started working on it. It was quite exciting. We had a digital lounge in 2019, 24th of October. Mm -hmm. Whoa. That was uh, 25 years after the launch from Lange One. Uh, a milestone, I think. And uh, really, the beginning was very polarizing. People were like, oh, the bracelet is too wide and it should be smaller and this and that. As if we didn't make any prototypes, of course. I think we had 20 different prototypes of and bracelets and the case. And you have enough experience with bracelets since you make it. So we said, okay, forever. now we are, and we have, in turn, we have quite some discussions going on take, before taking a decision. Mm. We know that. So, but it was logic because people were surprised. They know a longer like this and they suddenly, boom, they did this, oh, it's mm. massive. And the fun thing was reading these, these criticize, the criticism on the internet and everybody was, oh. After one week, there were more people who have it. I went in the boutique and had one to know race. It's genius. And that's what we make the watch for. Not for making pictures, not for putting in the safe. We, put, we make watches for having on your wrist and having a happy life with it and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And then it turned around, it, it became like crazy, 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 you know? And, and we said, wow, and we didn't expect so many uh, people diving on that watch. Yeah. And then we all went in lockdown and then the whole COVID shit period came. So you have uh, backlogs in delivery and suppliers and, uh, and that like was, everyone it was quite else. A, like everyone else. So, but that was uh, just two examples of stories. Just two examples. But coming back to the digital watch, this is uh, an amazing way to put it. It's a, uh, let's say, uh, a defining, uh, a defying of the industry because you have the, the classic look with the and you put it digital but it's not digital they it's our interpretation of yeah digital. it's only a few that were brave enough to go in this direction yeah uh, but you had a lot of difficult uh, technical difficulties uh, it was challenging and I'm happy to be able to work in a company where we have possibility to develop such watches. Because I can imagine that if you are more commercial on the way, you say, oh no, no, you do a calculation, oh, the watch is way too expensive, people don't understand, and it's too risky, and blah. Mm -hmm. We took risks with that watch. Mm -hmm. We took risks with your dishes. We took risks with, we take risk. We invest the earned money in development. In development. Our development department is bigger than our marketing department. We have 55 people in product development. Mm -hmm. I think we have around 20, 30 maybe in marketing. That's a difference. That's a different approach. Our brand is product. And the ideas from products come from the inside. It's not that we do market research or something like that and, and they tell us what to develop. It's the other way around. Marketing is marketing what and and I do not, not mean mm. that negatively because it's a big challenge. Mm. Not, uh, being normal and not a watchmaker, I always make that running gag because I'm a watchmaker myself. So, uh. but for non-watchmaking people, communicating about the technique, but bring it in a way that is attractive. Because if you have an engineer who's talking about the ins and outs of the moon, like yeah. it's not interesting. So that that's a challenge, and we have. We are very fortunate to have a marketing department with people who understand and also live the brand long and long as we do. Mm -hmm. um, so th that's cool, but it's it's product. For and me, Bloomline already said when yeah. he started the brand, the watch is the hero. Not me, not Wilhelm Schmidt or who else. Walter mm -hmm. Langer said the same. I'm not a hero. He was really disgusted about 
they made a he made a, a watch for him for his birthday, 80th birthday, something like that. Right, with his signature engraved. There's long as I don't doubt that should be enough. He didn't <laughs> like it. He didn't like it. He said, "No, we make watches. Watches are the hero, not me." Mm -hmm. And that's a, that's a thing we still do. Even Blumlein is not there anymore. Walter Lange is not there anymore. But we still continue the spirit, mm -hmm. and we are a part of a group of Richemont. But they allow allow us, and they live it also with us. To continue in that way, because I know that some people see this bit of skepticism of oh, Richemont is a big group and they were running. No, uh, they say stay as you are, careful. Wow, great products, go on like that, and they uh, they they say yeah, they stimulate and they support us, and and they make it also able to support us even in bad times. Should not forget mm -hmm. that COVID hit us. And the main target is of all, not only for Lange, but also Richmond group, the group was keep all the people on board because that's our responsibility. Managers seem to forget they are also responsible for the people. Yeah, yeah, sure. And especially at Lange, is people. If we want to make more watches, we don't want, but make more quantity, we need more watchmakers. Machinery doesn't help extra because we need more hands. And you saw it today with the with the watchmaking school, that's how we did it. Yes, it's an absolutely amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's an, yeah. The, the spirit of the family that you find here is not very often met, especially in a, in a brand that is part of a group. That is yeah. very hard to achieve. Yeah. Yeah. And this is something you have here. In the communication you have between the people, it's clear that everyone thinks about this and does himself that he is important enough for, for yeah. everything, for the entire thing. And I, I must say, Richemont is strong in supporting that. Especially the chairman, Jan Rupert. It's, it's, it is like it is. And that's, mm. that's how we... Uh, how we became this, and we go, we go on. <laughs> <laughs> um, coming ag again back to the side track, the most impressive for me at this watch is how you transfer the power for the spring to the indication. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because I, I was, I was seeing today in the in the tour the difference between the barrel springs, various barrel springs, and I was like, ah, okay material, length, with it. These are things you might try to simulate, but at the end, in a real watch, there are too many things to, to take into account. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's raining outside, and it's just that, that micrometric, micrometric, micrometric that you didn't have from tolerances, and it doesn't work anymore. That, that is very impressive. Yeah, that's our work. Should I, not forget it. <laughs> that's our <laughs> <Yeah>. job. <laughs> uh, the idea of putting two barrels to double the, the power reserve, yeah. it's not new. No. But when you're putting the two uh, barrels, doesn't necessarily think that you have to double the power. No. You have more power, but not double the power. Yeah, yeah the length of the power. So the power on itself, in fact, the, the, the torque mm -hmm. from these main springs is, in fact, a little bit less than the previous the edition previous. of the, the movement. And that's what we worked on. So we were able, we first looked at how much we could reduce that spring. Because if you know that the main barrel, which done its job for more than 11 years, 10 years, 12, with a single barrel movement, with mm, a 36 mm. hour person, you say, okay, how to, how to make it longer, to double it? Oh, you can make two barrels, yeah, but they can't be in the same size, otherwise you have a double size to watch, so that doesn't work. So you need to know what is required, what kind of energy is really needed. So you start to scale down and scale down until you come to a point that it doesn't work anymore. So, okay, mm. that's the lowest amount of torque the movement allows to continue. Then uh, you have the interaction with the remontoir system. The remontoir system is in fact so, the barrels of the barrel in the early watch was so strong that it would rapidly move the discs, but the, the power directly to the escapement was too much. There's too much power on that escapement. Mm -hmm. So we scaled mm -hmm. that down. Oh, it doesn't work, scale down. Mm -hmm. 
And then we have the intermediate thing. So you have the remontoir spring, and that one is powering the escapement. Mm. But only for a minute. After a minute, this why, little. Why a minute? <laughs> why not 10 seconds or. Like in the Langer 31, we had 10 seconds. That was not relevant. But here it's relevant because we want to. We said, ah, wait a minute. We, we wanted to jump the new ones every minute. Once mm -hmm. a minute. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Aha, so, and if we could create a remontoir spring which allows the watch to tick tack during that minute, and when the minute has to be switched, in the same turning movement that the, the big spring is liberated, it allows us to move the disc. So you have but in the same movement also to recharge that little spring again for the next minute, and that's what the process is. Do you have enough torque in the remontoir so you can move the discs and also continue working? The, the remontoir doesn't move the discs. It, yes, it's offer constant power to the, to the balance spring. Yeah, it's charged every minute. Mm -hmm. And that spring is making the watch tick-tacking, so it's, it mm -hmm. powers the balance wheel. So it ticks, 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 minute goes by. Then the remontoir system liberates that huge power from the two barrels, or now two barrels before mm -hmm. one barrel. Mm -hmm. Charges. It moves just mm. slightly, but due to the gear train, it moves the disc, but at the same time, the same moving, it connects also with the remotor system and charges the ring. Ah, now I completely understand. Every minute mm. again. Mm. Mm. So, yeah. And we have remotor systems to... for the Langer 31 and Terra Luna, which recharge every 10 seconds. Mm. We have the one from Zeitwerk with every minute, and we have one from the Richard Langer jumping second. Because mm. what happens if you recharge every second the mm. constant force? No, then you create a jumping second in the Richard Langer. Mm. That's absolutely amazing. You have to change also the, the springs, the barrel springs, not only the width and so on, but your materials. No, the material is the same. It's the same. Yeah, it's the, the same. It's the same. And, and the dimensions are different. And the change, the changement from going from one big barrel 36 hours to going to two for 72 hours, we reduced because that remontoir spring which needs to be recharged mm -hmm. every minute, and we said, ah, it needs a certain power, torque. If that could be softer at spring, then the big springs need, doesn't need to be so strong to mm. rewind. Aha. Uh -huh. So you, and then we say, ah, oh, but if we gently make the balance wheel lighter, you don't see it. It's, it's, we're talking about milligrams, Slightly. so this is mm. very tiny. Then it allowed us to reduce the, the force of the remontoir spring. And the remontoir spring is reduced and then we, so we, we worked on the whole mm. energy chain to reduce forces. And that's what happened. That, that was this is how it was out. possible yeah. to reach 70. And the hours. barrels have a different dimension, so they're slightly bigger in diameter, so mm. they fit more windings of the longer mainspring inside, so you can go longer. That's a compromise, that's calculations. Yeah. But you have also less mechanical stress than in the beginning, that from the original design. That had yeah, a lot it's of different, work. in a different way, yeah. 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 yeah, amazing piece. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. And also, we make it smaller. Yeah, 0.4 millimeters. Yeah, yeah. but every yeah. micrometer. Yeah, I know. Counts. For watchmakers, that's huge. Yes. That's yes. huge. Yes. Uh, we always take, try to look at the uh, thing. I know there are people say, how long are thick watches? But if a longer watch is big or uh, some thicker, there is a reason to. A big you reason will not it. just see. Uh, a big longer watch with a tiny movement because of design. We don't do that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's because the development is movement, design goes hand in hand. So they do all op optimized and it's not so much the size or the thickness, it's the size and the thickness, the proportions on the wrist. That's what it makes so challenging and interesting. That is what counts for the client. The clients can wear a bigger watch today, especially a big, bigger mm. watch. And if the it's if not too thick, the bigger watch it's perfect. So you have some sweet spots in in the in the proportion. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's great, Tony. Thank you very much. A pleasure. A pleasure. <laughs> <laughs>